We all know that the UK weather can be, well, changeable. But what if I told you that there are powerful global forces at play shaping our weather patterns in ways you might not expect? From the jet stream pushing storms across the Atlantic to phenomena like El Nino and the Indian Ocean Dipole. These global drivers don't just affect the weather halfway around the world, they can also have an impact on the weather right here in the UK. In this video, we'll give you a snapshot of some of these key climate drivers, like the North Atlantic Oscillation, the Madden-Julian Oscillation, and even sudden stratospheric warming, and uncover how they work to help shape our weather and climate here in the UK. Let's start with the North Atlantic Oscillation, or NAO for short. It's perhaps the simplest one as it just describes the difference in atmospheric pressure between Iceland and the Azores. It has two main phases, positive and negative. The positive phase is when the pressure difference is larger than average, and the negative phase is when the pressure difference isn't so strong. In a positive NAO phase, when the pressure difference is greater than normal, there is a strong pressure gradient, and the westerly winds that blow across the Atlantic are strengthened, for the UK, this brings milder, wet and occasionally stormy winter weather as warm, moist Atlantic air dominates. In a negative NAO phase, the pressure difference weakens. The westerly winds lose strength. This increases the chance of colder air from the east or northeast to flow in. For the UK, this increases the chance of colder, drier weather with frost, fog and during winter snow can be more likely. Storms are usually less frequent, but the cold can be more persistent. So while a positive NAO usually brings milder and wetter weather, a negative NAO can bring the coldest and snowiest conditions the UK sees. Although the NAO is one of the main drivers of UK winter patterns, it doesn't act alone. Let's look at another player further away that can influence the larger atmospheric circulation, sometimes reinforcing or disrupting NAO-related weather. El Niño and La Niña are part of a larger climate pattern known as El Niño Southern Oscillation, or ENSO. While this cycle primarily affects the tropical Pacific, its ripple effects can influence weather patterns as far away as the UK. Let's start with El Niño. El Niño occurs when the sea surface temperatures in the central and eastern tropical Pacific Ocean rise significantly. This disrupts normal oceanic and atmospheric patterns, weakening the trade winds, leading to a warming in the upper atmosphere. These changes shift and strengthen the subtropical jet stream, which can then influence the North Atlantic jet stream, often pushing it further north and increasing westerly winds across the Atlantic towards the UK. As a result, the UK typically sees a milder, wetter and windier start to winter, with more frequent Atlantic storms and above average temperatures. However, as winter progresses, the jet stream can become more variable. At times, high pressure builds to the north or east, disrupting the westerly flow and allowing Arctic air to reach the UK. This can lead to a colder end to winter, especially if sudden stratospheric warming occurs. But more on that later. So while El Nino tends to increase the risk of a mild, stormy start to winter, the second half can turn colder, particularly if other drivers come into play. Now let's take a look at La Niña. La Niña is the opposite of El Niño. It occurs when sea surface temperatures in the tropical Pacific Ocean drop below average, strengthening the trade winds and cooling the ocean surface. This cooling also shifts global atmospheric circulation patterns. For the UK, La Niña can also influence the position of the North Atlantic jet stream, but in a different way to El Niño, often pushing it further south during early winter. This allows cold Arctic air to flow in from the north, increasing the chance of frost, snow and colder than average conditions at the start of the season. Later in winter, the jet stream may shift again, allowing more milder westerly air flows from the Atlantic to return. This can bring wetter and milder conditions towards the end of the season. So while La Nina winters sometimes start cold in the UK, they don't always stay that way and the second half can turn milder as atmospheric patterns evolve. Both El Nino and La Nina affect the UK in different ways and they can be useful tools in seasonal forecasting, providing clues about the kind of winter we might expect. 
For more information, check out the video below in the description. While ENSO has a strong influence on global weather patterns, its impact on the UK is more indirect and can be shaped or even overridden by other factors closer to home, like the North Atlantic Oscillation. But it is still a key piece of the puzzle. Another important global climate driver with an ocean at its centre that helps us understand seasonal patterns is the Indian Ocean Dipole, or the IOD. Like ENSO, the Indian Ocean Dipole, or IOD, affects tropical sea surface temperatures and can influence weather far beyond its region. The two are often linked. ENSO can sometimes trigger or enhance IOD events, but the IOD can also act independently. The IOD describes changes in sea surface temperatures and atmospheric pressure across the tropical Indian Ocean, and has three phases, positive, negative and neutral. It typically peaks in autumn, but its effect can extend into early winter. In a neutral phase, the IOD has little influence on global weather. In a positive IOD, waters near East Africa become warmer than usual, while waters near Indonesia cool. This can shift tropical thunderstorm patterns westward, affecting atmospheric circulations globally. When this happens, the jet stream over the North Atlantic can strengthen, increasing the chance of mild, wet and windy weather in the UK, especially when other patterns like ENSO are active. While the IOD is often influenced by El Niño or La Niña, it can also occur independently. A notable example was in 2019 when the IOD reached record positive levels. ENSO was neutral, but other factors like a positive NAO played a key role. The UK experienced an exceptionally wet and stormy winter. In fact, February 2020 saw a series of named storms and it was the wettest February on record. For a deeper look at the IOD and its global impacts, check out the video in the description with Alex. The Madden-Julian Oscillation While climate patterns like ENSO and the IOD influence weather over months, others can bring changes much more quickly. One of the most important short-term drivers we monitor is the Madden-Julian Oscillation, or the MJO. Discovered in 1971 by Dr. Roland Madden and Dr. Paul Julian for the American National Center for Atmospheric Research, or the NCAR. The MJO was identified while they were studying tropical wind and pressure patterns. They noticed regular oscillations in winds between Singapore and Canton Island in the West Central Equatorial Pacific. The MJO is a large scale pulse of tropical rainfall that arrives eastward around the globe, circling the equator roughly every 30 to 60 days. Although it may be thousands of miles away, certain phases of the MJO, especially when passing over the Indian Ocean or Western Pacific, can disrupt tropical weather patterns and trigger changes in the Atlantic jet stream two to three weeks later. For the UK, this can mean a shift towards milder, wetter weather if the jet stream strengthens or colder, blocked conditions if the MJO disrupts the usual westerly flow. The MJO can also act as a trigger for sudden stratospheric warming, which can be even more disruptive for UK weather. To explore how the MJO works and its global influence, check out the video in the description. Earlier we mentioned Sudden Stratospheric Warming, or the SSW for short, which can bring dramatic shifts in winter weather patterns. SSWs occur when the polar vortex, a band of strong westerly winds 30 to 50 kilometers high in the stratosphere, is suddenly disrupted by upward moving atmospheric waves. These can be amplified by tropical drivers like the MJO or changes in the background state of the stratosphere. When the vortex weakens or even reverses, it can set off a chain reaction. This disruption gradually filters down through the atmosphere, usually over the course of a couple of weeks, at times weakening or buckling the jet stream. As a result, high pressure can build to the north of the UK, allowing cold air to spill in from the near continent. For the UK, this can result in a spell of below average temperatures and potentially an increased chance of snowy weather, typically two to three weeks after the SSW begins. A well-known example of this occurred in 2018 when an SSW contributed to widespread heavy snow across the country. But it's important to note that not every SSW leads to a UK whiteout. These events are relatively common and each one is different. 
Many, in fact, don't lead to a UK whiteout, and like many global drivers, an SSW doesn't guarantee a specific outcome. It merely increases the likelihood of certain types of weather patterns. If you want more details around the SSW, there's more links in the description. The quasi-biennial oscillation. So what influences how likely we are to see some of these stratospheric events? Well, that's where the quasi-biennial oscillation, or the QBO, comes in. Stick with me and I'll explain. The QBO is a slow, regular shift in high altitude winds over the equator, switching from easterly to westerly roughly every 28 months. While it doesn't directly impact surface weather in the UK, it plays a key role in shaping the behaviour of the polar vortex. For example, when the QBO is in its easterly phase, the polar vortex is often weaker and more easily disturbed, increasing the chance of an SSW and therefore a colder end to winter in the UK. In contrast, when the QBO is in its westerly phase, the vortex tends to be stronger, favouring milder, more Atlantic-driven winters. In this way, the QBO acts as kind of a backdrop, helping modulate the influence of other drivers like ENSO, the MJO and the NAO. Still curious? Well, we have a more in-depth explainer in the details below. So while the UK's weather might seem unpredictable, it's not without pattern. These global drivers from the distant Pacific to the high stratosphere interact in complex ways to shape our seasons. By understanding them, we can better anticipate what's coming even weeks or months ahead. Many of these global drivers can occur at the same time, sometimes reinforcing each other, sometimes pulling in opposite direction. It's a constantly shifting puzzle, but each driver helps give us another piece, helping us build a clearer picture, make more informed long-range forecasts, and stay one step ahead of whatever the weather brings.